Today we're exploring one of Taiwan's most fascinating and eerie abandoned sites, the legendary 13 Levels, also known as the Xuanandong Smelter. This colossal, ghostly structure is a relic of Taiwan's industrial past, standing as a haunting reminder of a bygone era. Located near the small town of Jingguashi in northern Taiwan, the 13 Levels was once a bustling copper and gold smelting facility. Built during the Japanese occupation in the early 20th century, this massive complex played a crucial role in Taiwan's mining industry, but today it's a ghost town, abandoned and left to the elements, making it a paradise for urban explorers like us. Walking through these abandoned halls, you can almost feel the history seeping through the walls. From the rusting machinery and crumbling concrete to the remnants of workers' quarters, every corner tells a story. But getting to this place was not easy. The structure has since been taken over by the greenery. It's highly unstable and there are plenty of hazards around, so we had to be careful. Now the 13 Levels isn't just any gold mine, it's actually shrouded in a very dark and haunted past. During World War II, this smelter was more than just a place of industry. It became a prison for allied prisoners of war, forced to work under harsh conditions. The stories of their suffering and the tragedies that unfolded here have left an indelible mark, giving rise to tales of restless spirits and eerie encounters. Imagine being held captive in these crumbling walls, subjected to grueling labor with little hope of escape. The prisoners of war were forced to extract and process ore, enduring relentless toil and suffering. Many perished due to the harsh conditions, malnutrition, and disease. It's said that their spirits still linger here, down to the place where they endured so much pain and sorrow. Let's see if we can find anything or hear any whispers from the distant past as explore and find our way around the 13 levels. The adventure starts with Josh, Dan, Chester, and Da Hao from earlier in the day where we explored the abandoned bomb shelters of Taiwan. Check that episode out if you missed it. It was a quick drive from the bomb shelters, but first we had to find our way inside. My climbing gloves. Hey, there you go, Rich. Thought you weren't gonna make it. <laughs> However, I don't see a way out. Oh no, boys. Oh no. Maybe there's no turning back now. Yeah, I think we just full send it now. Backtracking now. So that way did not look good. So we climbed that thing over there for now. Ah, here we go again. It's a lot easier up here. Oh, hey, so the way here, check it out. First floor of the 13 floors. Check it out, we're yeah, here yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Actually, this is the first time I go inside too. Me too. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, so it's all our first times, yeah? Okay, it's their first it's time too. So yeah, this copper factory was built on top of these copper and gold mines way back in the day by the Japanese around 1940s during the World Wars to probably manufacture bullets and other, I guess, weapons and everything. And so what happened was the Japanese would send prisoners of war from the Allied nations. They would send the prisoners of war here to work on the copper mines. Ever since 1970s-ish, these mines have been exhausted. This has been standing here ever since, known as the 13th floor. Alright, going up the stairs here. Literally walking through history. Here it is. I mean, it makes sense. This place is extremely old. Actually, almost a century now. Wow. The view is kind of nice though. Not gonna lie, right? It's pretty empty now, but it looks really cool from the outside. It has really interesting history. Here we go. Before we continue, I gotta thank the sponsor of this video, Aura. So what is Aura? Aura is your one-stop shop for online safety and security. We spend half our lives in the digital world and the internet, and that leaves us open and susceptible to identity theft, scams, online threats, and etc. Now when I say one-stop shop, I mean it really does just about everything. It monitors the dark web to see if any of your personal information has been leaked. It also monitors your accounts and alerts you of any suspicious activity. It's also a VPN, which can help you shop, bank, and browse the web securely and privately. In addition to that, it scans your devices for malware and viruses. And it also requests and removes your information from data brokers, reducing spam, robocalls, and unwanted advertising. 
On top of all of that are some of my favorite features when using the app credit score monitoring, and a password manager. If you're still one of those people who has the same password or set of passwords for every account you have, I'd highly recommend using a password manager. I've switched a while ago and haven't forgotten a password since. Aura comes with this password manager, except it's so much cleaner and streamlined than the one I have right now. The app is simple and easy to set up too. I went through it myself, and as I've said earlier, it really has about everything you need. No more having multiple accounts for separate reasons, and the best part, all this comes with half the price of a Netflix account. So if you're interested, head to the link in the description below, or go to aura.com slash brokebutrich to start your two-week free trial. It's not easy, right? Okay. Let's go. Uh, yes. Woo. Once we were inside, we had 13 floors to climb. It wasn't easy finding our way around, but luckily we had a bird's eye view to help scout it all out. It's not bad. Oh yeah, that's good. Ooh. It's closer? Yeah, yeah, yeah go, I gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Thanks. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> this is a crazy adventure. I love this. There we go. This is how we do it. Oh, yeah, we met it. Oh, shit. here it is. Alright, we finally made it up, yo. It's amazing here. Amazing. I love this. This was a crazy adventure that we had to climb all the way up that. I mean, you saw it with the drone. But we finally made it up here. We're on the 13th floor now. You can see like literally the minecart rails, right? Yeah. That they used to have back in the day. Yeah, you didn't even walk over there yet. But no, it's amazing. Well, let's go. You can see right here, there's probably like a furnace, stove, or something. And here we got a whole bunch of rubble. So look over here. Well, actually, I don't know, but it looks like a chute. Some sort of chute. That's all poison? Yeah. It's say it's poison, so the government oh, don't let down. people come to here. Bad news. There's no way on a rooftop. Oh no, really? Yeah, I should have checked on the drone again. It looks like we can get out on that side. Yeah, okay, yeah, so. Not, not, the, yeah. not, the, not this side. Not this. So getting out is gonna be a whole adventure, too. Oh okay, so Dan actually saw people wearing like vests and on the first floor. We're gonna see where Josh and Justo. I wanna say hi now. <laughs> Exploring abandoned places is like stepping into a time capsule. Each room, each corner tells a story of its past. And when you're with fellow explorers, those stories come alive as we piece together the history and imagine what once was. This adventure in particular was a hike and a half up all 13 levels, but seeing the view and the remnants of the place makes it worth all the work. Urbex isn't an extremely popular hobby, so it's moments like these where we meet other like-minded people that make Urbex so special. It's not on camera, but instead of continuing exploring the place, we ended up spending our last bits of daylight talking to them about the places they went and trading locations and spots. They even showed us an easier way out since that's the way they came in. It really made the journey that much more memorable, making those connections along the adventure. <laughs> it's really fun meeting like other explorers. All right, but the big question is, yeah. who's cooler, this group or that group? Ooh. What group? Well, that's tough. One thing going for that group is that they do free diving. Yeah, but you know what his, this group does? Architect. He's an architect, though. <laughs> so who's? He's an architect, photographer, producer. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I like the vibes on this group more. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. Yeah. yeah. We climbed. 13 stories yeah. of the squad. Yeah, they didn't climb sh <laughs> But yeah, that's it. Wrapping up this video. Two crazy explorers in one day with the squad here. Cut to the outro. We ended the day by sharing a meal from the night markets of Keelung, which I have a video exploring this unique looking city with its amazing food options, as well as carnival games. Go check that video out if you haven't seen it. What do you think? Taiwan, Taiwan meatballs? Oh. Good or no? I really like the Taiwan meatballs. Oh. Get some? Okay, okay. Why not? Some, Why yeah. not? Yeah, let's get some. Yeah, I... Sounds like a great idea. Thanks.
Dude, this line is so long. Stand it all the way over there. Over here. <laughs> Got our food, we're trying to look for a spot to eat. This is the food that we got, crab soup right here. That comes with rice. We also got Taiwanese meatball and mini sausages over here. And then a watermelon juice. Hey y'all, back at the crib. I actually forgot this camera at the 7-Eleven. You can see the footage. I actually Ubered back to go get it. I wasn't too, too worried because Taiwan people are so... Like they have that Japanese like respect and politeness. When I got there, they took it down already and the guy actually asked me for proof that it was mine. I guess it's a good thing that they do that. They were extremely nice and I got my camera back totally safe. So yeah, people here in Taiwan are really awesome. Just look at the people we hung out with today. Complete strangers before today. We also met even more explorers. I didn't get as much video of them, but we actually talked to them for like 20 or so minutes afterwards. And we met them at the abandoned place and they gave us a few spots too that we might check out as well. Taiwan is an amazing, amazing country full of amazing people, amazing food, amazing views. And I honestly really do love this country because Japan is so hard to beat, but Taiwan might just be my favorite Asian country now. Thank you all for watching. We had some amazing explorers today saw a bunch of Taiwanese culture in the art style that we saw in the bomb shelter had a crazy cool adventure at the 13th floor Taiwan I love you travel and abandoned everything let's get it like comment subscribe all that good stuff and I'll see y'all next time peace all right we are getting out of here and we are going to get food oh I'm so hungry yes I want food <laughs> Gotta have good food after a long adventure, always. It's like the ritual. Yes.